Good evening. Welcome to the latest live edition of Last Bell Boxing. Join us ever by Ander. Good evening, Ander. How are you, mate? Okay. All good, all good. And joined by Sean. Good evening, Sean. Evening, guys. So we're going to jump straight into it. We've got to start the show this evening. So, Andy, I'll hand it over to you because obviously you broke your virginity in terms of matchroom shows at the weekend and went along to lead. So I think you're best place as ever to talk you through the card. Yeah, great night, mate. Uh, very long day, though. The this, this show started at two o'clock um, and obviously broke halfway through for the England game, which was quite bizarre. You know, it's not something I expect at a, at a boxing show, but... I'll be completely honest with you, mate. We call out matchroom when they don't do things right. They did. They, this was a. This was a great job. I don't know how it come across on on um on the zone. I'm guessing they just cut the broadcast, did they? Yeah. So um, yeah, it come across. It, it the way they managed it was brilliant, mate. Uh, the the undercard show finished at seven o'clock. They played, they played some some uh, music to get the crowd involved. And then everybody came out and sat around the ringside, which it was actually nice to see um, the likes of Eddie Earn and, and the commentary team drop the guard a little bit and, and chill out, to be honest with you. It's probably the best way to describe it. It was, it was a really good atmosphere. Obviously, we lost and that was disappointing, but... It surprisingly didn't spoil the night. I was thinking to myself all night long, if England lose here, the atmosphere is going to die off. There's going to be nothing left uh, in the atmosphere for, for, for the Bridges fight and for the Warrington fight. But the crowd came alive again. As soon as Bridges music hit, the crowd, the crowd came alive. Bit bit of um, They were a bit of, damp, bit of a damp squid for the Felix Cash fight, but that wasn't very good, was it? No. No. So um, for, for, we'll start there. I think. I think we'll start with the Felix Clash fight. He was very underwhelming. One set, I felt like he was very flat. Um, he's had such a long layoff in injuries. It's it's taken its toll. Uh, and then you got Amo Williams sat at ringside, probably thinking he's got a very easy night's work. He, play, he played his part, I know Williams did, though, and he played his part on commentary. He was absolutely quality with some of the things he was coming was out it? with. Obviously, I didn't, I didn't get to hear any of that. Yeah, and I thought the post-fight press, um, um, the post-fight interview, sorry, was very good as well, because I know Williams was having none of it, and he, he was pulling it, pulling it on him while he was stood there. It was a bit, a bit cringy, to be honest. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Felix Cast didn't like it very mm -hmm. much, did it? Um, Felix, for me, for me, Felix Cash can't be that bad again, mate. He, he was, he was, he was poor, um, and he, he'll know that. He'll know that himself. He, he's definitely blue cobwebs away in that fight. Took way too many shots. Sean, did you see the Felix Cash fight? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. What was what was your opinion of his performance? I mean, probably he, he, he had his best performance on the BT show, didn't he? When he either won or retained his British title, I can't remember. And and then to come down, down to that performance, it's like chalk and cheese, really, wasn't it? And and after all what he said, he, he can't be that bad again. And I'm just wondering, you know, Connor Ben, the situation in the gym, do you think that sort of affected all of them mentally a bit, really? Sort of all, yeah. almost being sure. pushed down and put into a, to, to a category and, you know, that... That maybe affect him. I don't know. I, I think I actually think that's quite a good shot. I, I know the professionals, and it shouldn't affect him, but it's going to, isn't it? The trouble is you know. with Felix Cash. The trouble is though, he's not a great talker, so he really does rely on his performances in the ring. So you know, he really does need to get that part of the game right because he, he just he just isn't a talker, is it? No. Um, I like Felix Cash though. He's a very aggressive fighter, but he, he was just off it um, Saturday night, mate. He just, he just from from the very start. I mean, the first round he come out flying. I thought, oh, he's on it here. And then to me, I don't know what it looked like on the TV, but to me, it looked like he was blown at the end of round two. Like he was really struggling. Maybe, yeah. maybe just everything. Like Sean might be right, Carl. Maybe everything that's gone on. 
since the Conor Ben situation kicked off, it it could it could it could have affected the old the old camp the old the old team. Maybe yeah, I, I'm I'm slightly, gonna, I'm gonna, I, I slightly turn that on his head and go. We, we were such a long layoff. You're thinking of itchy knuckles and be desperate to get into the ring. Yeah, maybe, but what you know, he, he he was he was meant to be on that bill, wasn't he? He was meant to be. Uh, was it chief yeah. support or was it chief support? He was, wasn't he? Um, mm. So so obviously he got himself primed for that, and then he's how long has it been since that? Six eight weeks. Months eight months. Well, no, no, no. Since since he since he was supposed to be on the on the Connor Ben show, when was that cancelled? Oh yeah. So I'm thinking since we lost that. Um, yeah, you looked at about eight weeks, aren't you? So six eight weeks. Yeah. He's got himself primed for that, ready for that fight. And then what do you do as a fighter? He's got to stay in the gym. He's got to stay fit. But but how, how much do you push it? Do you go back to sparring again for eight for another eight weeks? Do you have a bit of a layoff? What you know? It's difficult, isn't it? He might have burnt himself out. He might have done too much. But that's I'm what the sport have, science is all for. Sure, that's what the sport science is there for. They measure maybe, all that, mate. don't they? Maybe, mate. But uh, uh, sport sports science is ready to. Is a, is meant to be there to get him ready for that mm. one fight. It's not meant to be getting getting ready for two fights in a row, is it? Which is basically what... I mean, I think, I think we've been very kind here. The only, the only get out I'll give Felix Cash is maybe mentally rather than physically. Because there's, there's that many checks and measures in place now regarding the physio physical side of boxing that maybe it was mental. Maybe he couldn't get up for it. Maybe. I'm I'm going to give him a little bit of a pass though, mate. I don't, I don't think he can be that bad again. I, I think he'll be up for... Well, he better not be. Well, he's, obviously, Amo Williams is is um is a dangerous fighter, isn't he? So, if he if he fights like that, he gets beat convincingly. But I I can't see Felix Cash being that bad again, mate. Moving swiftly on to uh, what what in the build it was probably the the best build up of the old of the old week. Uh, Ebony Bridges against Shannon O'Connell. A lot of, a lot of nasty things being said. From Team O'Connell during the build-up, um, a lot of nasty things being said for for the last few years, probably. Um, and Ebony Bridges just put it on her. I thought she was outstanding. Yeah, I was disappointed with O'Connell. I was very disappointed with her. Do you know? Um, do you know what, Carl? I thought from from where I was sitting, I was quite close in, and from where I was sitting, she just couldn't take Ebony's power. As soon as Ebony landed anything big, she was done. She was, and, and and it got to a point where she was a little bit sheepish from the shots coming in. She was still fighting. Don't get me wrong. Got to give her credit for that. But every time something big landed, and it landed flush, she was rocking all over the place. Am I um, right in thinking that? But am I right in thinking that O'Connell's actually boxed for up on other governing bodies um, cards? Very possibly, mate. Yeah, because I, I've got a fear that maybe the level of opponent. Um, caught her out rather than rather than that because she was in deep water this time, wasn't she? Well, I mean, if you just got going, well, I'm not going to name names, obviously, but I've just, I've just been drawing comparisons. It may yeah, be a yeah, comparison yeah. to draw. Obviously, obviously, going on going on record. Well, what Sean smiling at? She'd had three times as many fights as Ebony Bridges. Professional. All about levels, though, isn't it? Of course, it is, mate. Absolutely. You know, uh, and and she did. She clearly underestimating Ebony. She clearly believed in all this hype that's going around on Twitter about she's not a proper boxer because she wears lingerie at weigh-ins. I mean, come on. You don't travel You don't travel halfway around the world to move house to not be taking the sport seriously now, do you? Any, yeah, I'm, not, I'm still not sure I'm a big fan of it, but she's earned the credentials now inside the ring. Of she has. She's proven Anyone that anyone that still is still disrespecting her for that reason is yeah. just a joke, mate. Uh, so well done, well done, Ebony Bridges. Um, onwards and upwards. I can see uh, unifications coming her way now, Carl. Yeah, yeah, she's definitely a, a, a she game in shape. She's in the state of her hand after the fight. You know, she's game in shape. She is, mate. Very tough, very tough little cooker. Uh, moving swiftly on to what was a great um, headliner. A uh, very close fight. I know you tweeted me, didn't you, partway through the fight, saying Warrington's going to lose this. Um, 
what a good fight though, mate. Uh, and it could have potentially gone either way, depending on how you were looking at it. Most, most of the ringside had either level or Lopez winning by one round. They were all, you know, <laughs> it's it's really interesting, mate. They were all looking at each other and in, going into that last round, raising their eyebrows, thinking, oh dear, we're in for a difficult scorecard here. And um, to be fair to the judges, they pretty got it. They got it pretty bang on, I think. It was it was very close. How did you score it, Sean? Yeah, right. I had it really the same as the judges, I think. Um, I, I think with Josh Warrington, though, do you think he's one that needs the big fights to be up for the challenge? Or do you think it's just sort of coming to the end of his career now? Because it's hard to tell with him, isn't it? I'll let you answer that, Carl. He left him, in terms of this far, I'll pick that up first. He left him until far too much to do. He came out the, came out the block too slow. He got dominated first half of the fight. Um, and then I think about round eight, he kind of started picking the rounds up, which for me was too late. I actually had it scored 115, 113, which one of the judges did. Um, so to Lopez, that is. I just think Josh Warrington's on the slide. It's not the, it's not the first time I've said it on this channel. Um, he, he didn't look himself. Yes, he had a good championship rounds, but I didn't like the way Lopez was moaning and, you know, talking about been putting his head in and all that lot um but i think lopez just nicked it but i think warrington's best days are behind him and i know we're going to talk about lee wooden a bit that won't surprise anybody but um i think he's tailor made for wood and i think now he hasn't got a bell it could also almost make that summer fight more achievable well the warrington camp are definitely going to want it more now because when when warrington was holding the ibf they weren't really interested, mate. Let's have it right. Well, they wanted to go to America, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, it's still possible that American fights happen because there's a good chance now other belt holders might look at Warrington and say it's an easy night work. The likes of Navarrete, for example, he might he might be giving Warrington a shot now because he might think he's done. I think to say that Warrington's done is is a little bit is a little bit premature. Um. I do think he's, 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 he's a step slower than he used to be. He certainly doesn't throw the amount of punches that he used to. Um, you look, I mean, you, you compare last Saturday night uh, to, to Carl Frampton, to the Carl Frampton fight. It's nice. Yeah, how long are you talking there? Oh, it's a good few years, isn't it? That's what it's I mean. So, so, he's on the slide. Good evening, Joe. Yeah. Um, Joe had it 7-5 Lopez, by the way. Yeah, I think most people had it about the same. If it had been called a draw, Carl, I wouldn't have argued because there were some close rounds in there. Um, difficult, isn't it? And I'll tell you what as well. I understand how judges can be slightly swayed by the crowd because, because on those very close rounds... You can very easily get caught up in what's happening, atmosphere-wise, and think shots are landing that aren't landing. That happened a few times when I thought well, that's a very close run, but maybe, maybe Warrington might have nicked that. And I've watched it back. I've watched it back since and realised that wasn't the case. Yeah, I just think Warrington's been to the well too many times, and I said that a couple of weeks ago. He, he, he's just not the fighter he was. He's had some real wars, and he's had some real wars, has he? Question for you. Question. I know we're going to touch on Lee Wood in a little bit, but question for you. Should Lee... I mean, I heard... I overheard an interview uh, by a, an, another very famous Nottingham boxer at ringside, and he was saying that he, he'd he like to see Lee Wood if you Josh mean Carl the opportunity. Do you mean Carl Froch? I mean Carl Froch, yeah. Um he, he was saying, he, he, I mean, the interview's out there, so I'm not saying anything that's not in the public yeah, I just domain. wonder why he went incognito, that's all. Um, he, um, he, was, he was basically saying that uh, he'd like to see Lee Wood give Josh Warrington the opportunity. Do you think he should? And, and, would, it, and would it happen the other way around? If, if, if Wood had lost to Condon, for example, do you think Warrington would be giving him a shot? 
Well, there's an obvious answer to that. The answer is probably no. But from a Lee Wood perspective, if the money makes sense, you jump in with him, don't you? And he wants to fight the city ground. Let's be honest. Apart from Conlon, which you don't want to get again a rematch with Conlon yet, he's admitted that. Bringing a Navarati over, he's not going to do no bigger numbers than Josh Warrington. It's a more dangerous fight, in my view. So why wouldn't you? Know, why wouldn't he get the old Nottingham Leeds thing going? It's going to sell the city ground out like that. So it makes massive, commercial sense. Massive fight, isn't it? Even 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 now when it's only for one belt, it's a massive fight. Yeah, and a good shootout as well. Uh, yeah, for as long as it lasts. Uh, but I'm I'm with you, mate. I don't think I don't think Warrington I don't think Warrington lasts with Lee Wood now. It would have been a very, very good fight a year or two back. But I think now... Uh, I wouldn't say Father Time's caught up on him. I think what's happened is he's got really badly hurt, hasn't he? Um, and, and then he comes back from that to then get a broken jaw. Yeah. Joe, 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 says, Joe says Wood should go for the fight that makes him the most money, i.e. the Warrington fight. Yep. Yeah, you're right. You're I, right. Think, I think there's I think there's quite a few bits to the Warrington jigsaw. I think he's, he's on the slide. I'm not quite sure his desires there as well because he's made a few quid. He's had some bad injuries. So I, I think there's a mixture of things going on, which, which equates to that watered down version that we got on Saturday night, because that's what it was. So yeah. I just uh, you know, you always say you don't know when you've lost your passion for boxing, you should get out. So I think he's lost his passion a little bit. He can do all the, the chest pumping and all that at the weigh-in and all what he likes to do. But deep down, I think um, he's lost some passion for the game. Sean, anything you want to add to that? I was just going to ask uh, you guys, really. What do you think is the bigger fight, uh, the Conlon and Ream match or Warrington? I think, I think uh, depending on how you look at it... Um... The Conlon rematch is a much more difficult fight, in my opinion. It's a better fight. But if you're looking at it from uh, a purely uh, an excitement standpoint, the atmosphere would be outstanding against against Warrington because of the the, the football backgrounds for, for both fighters. Um, and remember, Sean, um, Wood wants that City Ground fight. Yeah, I think you've got more chance of getting Warrington over to the city ground than, than you have Conlon, in my honest view. I, I don't I don't want I'll be honest, Sean, I don't want to see Wood fight Conlon again until Conlon's got a belt. I think that's gonna happen though. I do think I do think he wins a world title and then then make that rematch. You know, make it make it for a unification. That makes that fight massive. Then that's a bigger fight. But up until up until that point, um yeah. Lee Wood's, Lee Wood's got a very tough, tough task in February, though. Let's not overlook. Let's not overlook Laura just yet. Well, we don't know it is Laura yet, do we? Uh, has, uh, has that not been announced? No. I thought it had, mate. Is that, no, was that someone a, not on? A pitch, no. All right, okay. Well, that, that obviously, I've just read what someone's put on on Twitter there and, and assumed it, it had, it had been. I thought it was. I thought it was made for for. Is it Feb the fourth? That's, it's being mooted, but it's not been is confirmed. It? So, I, th- I think uh, I think Irwin will announce it next week. But right, if it is Lava, props to Lee Wood again. I hope he gets the credit that he deserves because that's one tough fight. Well, and it also shuts a lot of people up that are saying he was scared. That's why he didn't take the fight. He wasn't really injured, which is a load Nonsense. of rubbish. It's just ridiculous. Uh, anyway, um, moving on, Cole. So, we're now going to talk about the David Evanesian versus Crawford fight. Happened early hours of Sunday morning in the UK. Quite a bit of controversy around this one because obviously they're wearing, I believe it was Everlast, which is quite ironic, Everlast gloves, which started splitting during the fight. That didn't ever last, you mean? Yeah, so I know Team Evanesian are actually looking at legal options regarding the fight because they believe the commission should have paused the fight and swapped the gloves so it could get quite messy but coming back to the fight 
I thought Ebenezer did okay. Um, it was always an uphill battle, wasn't it, against Terence Crawford? But I think you gave him a good workout. Um, but Crawford's just a bit special, isn't it? Let's be honest. He's just a bit special. And the shot that he, he knocked him down with was an absolute peach. So, dust yourself down, David. We're all very proud of you, Nottinghamshire. Adopted Nottingham, knew it, lad. Um, and he, I'm sure his stock's risen from this fight and he'll go again. No doubt about that. Sean, have you seen that fight? Did you watch it live, firstly? And if not, have you seen it back? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen it since. What's your feeling on... Firstly, on, on David's performance, how do you think he did against... Come on, let's have it right. The pound for pound king. Um, and then secondly, are you in agreement agreeance with Carl that, that they should have paused the fight and got new gloves? Well, I think first of all, there's no, there's no shame at all losing uh, how, how he did be, because I think 99% other than Errol Spence maybe would have lost in the same fashion. So, so I think he can hold his head high. Uh, with the gloves, I'm, I, I don't really know the technicalities of, of the rules or what should or what shouldn't happen. But but you would have thought, like in the rules, and they have so many checks on these gloves before the fight, weighing and whatnot. You would think if there was any sort of error, it would have been pulled up there and not uh, let happen during the fight. Very strange, wasn't it, how they, how they fell apart as quickly as they did. You don't see that very often these days in modern gloves. Um, my opinion is this other fighters that go 12 rounds with Crawford I know there's not been that many actually but other fighters that go or last longer with Crawford are fighters that don't engage they're fighters that stay away that's not a, that's not David Evanesian that's not that's not who he is as a fighter um, we said didn't we that he's going to try and pressure Crawford he's going to try and put it on him and he did at times he landed some clean some clean clean shots Craw Crawford's got a chin I'll say that he landed some clean shots, and he was it was always going to be a in a position where because of his style and having to get inside that jab, he was always going to take shots. So getting getting knocked out was always going to be a possibility. But absolutely, uh, he needs to be proud of himself. It, he'll he'll look back on this. I'm sure he's very disappointed, and he will be for a while. But he'll look back on this and 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 realise he he had a real good go. So good on him for that. Couple of comments in the side. So Ryan says that he predicted mid rounds. KO. Um, and then Ryan also goes on to say he believes the fight should have been stopped um, as a no contest. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know about it being stopped as a no contest, but maybe there's been precedences in the past, hasn't there? Years gone by where where they've paused a the fight and had, had new gloves put on. Uh, all, all the fighters have got another pair of gloves. They, they have two pairs yeah, of gloves. Yeah. So, why could that not happen? Why didn't that happen? That's the question. Obviously, that's what... Well, the, Nevada, the, the Nevada Boxing Commission has got to answer that question, aren't they, in court? I, yeah, I that, well, that's, and that's why Team Evanesian, if they are looking at legal proceedings, that's why they are. Because it's happened, in, it's happened before in those fights. The fights got stopped. The gloves got changed. Yeah. That's the difference between Evanesian going in the in the round that he went and maybe changing things up a little bit. You know, and it is what it is, mate. Um I don't I don't think they'll get anywhere if I'm being completely honest. It's not going to change anything. No. No. Uh, I can't imagine they'll get a rematch from it or anything like that. But um yeah, you know, congratulations for the effort that he put in. Because nobody goes Nobody goes in with Crawford and tries to do what Ebenezer tried to do. No. No. And let's see who else wants Ebenezer smoke. It'll be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, moving on to this weekend's card. Boxer card in Bournemouth. Chris Bill and Smith headlining. Um, over to you, Ander. Okay, firstly, then, before I go through the card, I'd like to get both of your opinions on what you think of the card. Uh, do you think Bill and Smith's an headliner? Number one, Carl? No. That was Sean Sweet. <laughs> Sean? He is in Bournemouth. He is in Bournemouth. Um, how many tickets does this do then, Sean? Uh, probably about 2,000 two or 2,000 what, what it holds, I reckon. 
Is that what the year in rolled, 2000? Yeah, 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 I think so. Maybe a bit higher, but not much more. Not very big then. There's some, there's some couple of, there's some decent fights on this card, um, which we'll get to shortly. I don't know, I'm not sure how far down you want to, you want to go down the card. We'll, we'll go through it quickly. Fidel Riley's back out again. Uh, he's currently seven yeah. now. Starting to um, to turn a few doubters uh, his way, Carl, isn't it? A lot of people took him as a bit of a joke because of his his YouTube background and all that. Um, are you taking him seriously as a fighter now? Yeah. Well, I do take I, I, I take him seriously because he's training and putting the draft in and, and, and fighting on cards. But as I always say, um, let's see when he jumps in with, with an active opponent who's going to fire back. Like I said, he, uh, no disrespect to the kid. He seems to be taking it seriously. Um, but there's levels to this game, isn't there? So I, I'll keep my powder dry on this one. Fair enough. Sean, what's your opinion? I I think he's... Because he was on the GB squad, wasn't he, for a period. So so I think he's got good fundamentals. But I'm, I, I'm yet to be convinced he's going to be like a British or European champion. Right, okay. Carl, just before we carry on, do you just want to pick those last two comments up from Ryan? Yep, so Ryan says, how can you have no spear gloves available in terms of Evanesian versus Crawford? Um, he didn't, Why should I be, that's why it should have been stopped. And Ryan goes on to say, Eddie should just let Boxer have a Coley if he's going to be the face of Sky Sports. Um, that, I'm assuming that's their zero competition. Joe says it's a solid Saturday fight night card in the current times. Watch worst. I've watched worse. Yeah, the, yeah, it's not a bad card, really, Joe. I agree with you, mate. Um, the Chief supports the fight that I'm intrigued with. Absolutely. We're going to get to that in a second. Um, but we'll quickly run, run through a few of the others. Uh, <laughs> Steve Drago Robinson is going in against Nick Campbell. This is just going to be a shootout, isn't it? Um, Steve Robinson sat at five and one. Uh, Nick Campbell sat at five and zero. Oh. Neither of them look like they're going to be world beaters, but the, these sorts of fights are, are normally quite entertaining. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that's I, I don't I don't think that will be on the live. Uh, that will be on the YouTube uh, show, I'm sure. Caroline Dubois um, is going in against Argentinian uh, Sofia Rodriguez. Again, looks like it's quite going to be quite a, an easy night's work for Colin Dubois. Another quite quite a pushover fight. I think that Steve Robinson fight will be up the card. You do? Yeah, I do. You think what? Because because it's going to be an entertaining fight. Yeah, and they're, and they're both similar around where they are with their career. I know. I mean, I hate that marketing ploy for Robinson. All that Drago stuff he's got going on is ridiculous. But he got a bit of a shock, didn't he? Getting beat Shane Gill. So, you know, and Nick Campbell beat Jay McFarland last time out. So I think that'll be a bit higher up on the bill. Just, uh, oh, okay. be um, uh, Michael McKinson is back yeah. out again. This this surprises me, Carl. I'll tell you for why. Because it's it's down as being a six-rounder. Is that right? That's what, that's what I've got. That's what I've got. Six-rounder. It's, just, well, come, it's just come off fighting. Virgil Ortiz Jr., for God's sake, who took him and he took him nine rounds, and now he's in a six rounder. What's going on? And, and also, I believe he's only on a one fight deal with, with um boxer. So, to have him on a one fight deal and put him out for six, um, makes mm. no sense, mate. Make, uh, but remember, ben, but rem remember, Ben Shalom's the future. Why even put him out, though, if you're going to put him in a sixth round? It makes no sense. I'm quite happy to call out Ben Shalom if I don't think something's right. And this ain't right, mate. You're wasting talent. I, Yeah, I think they just put him on there as a token because he's a Portsmouth lad, so it's only down the road. Yeah. So I think that they're just getting him out, and, and that's why he's on there. He he's a better than token. I mean, okay, I, I, I'll ask you this, Carl. Where do, where, where do you think Mickinson sits in amongst the welterweights in the UK? 
Oh, yeah. up here, I rate him. Um, Ortiz is no more, is it? No, Ortiz is one of the best in the world. So, um, yeah, right up there. Right up there. Um, is, he, is, he, is he better than, okay, is, is he better than British level? Does he be... Yes. Best? He's better than he's better than British level, yes. He's better than British level. In my in my opinion, he's better than European level as well. Yeah. And I, and I'll say it again, he's in a six round fight. I think he's just floating below that elite level. I, I'd say I'd say it was fringe world class. I know they like to throw that phrase out, don't they? I think it's fringe world class. Just and he's fighting a guy here as well. Um, Roberto Ariaza, who, who's been beat by Formella not that long ago. Yeah. And Formella's no no great shakes. Um, yeah, very disappointed with this, I have to say. Yeah, Joe, Joe in the sidebar says, yeah, Sean. Sean's right. Put, uh, put, let's do a Mexican wave, Sean. Sean's right. It's just to run out to get back to winning ways. But six rounds, Joe. Don't get it, he mate. Sh he shifts some tickets, though, won't he, as well? Yeah, I'm sure he will, and he's going to be high up on the card. I just don't see the... I just don't see it, mate. I don't understand it, but then again, you know. Hey-ho, just my opinion. Moving on to the, the, the fight that Carl... I know Carl's looking, looking forward to. Dan Aziz, Rocky Fielding. So before we come to you, Carl, I'll get Sean's opinion on this first. Sean, this is for the British... And vacant Commonwealth light heavyweight title. Yeah, I, I, I've got a feeling Rocky Fielding is going to roll back the ears in this one. I, I just think he's experienced. He's been there and done it. And, and I think that we see him through in this fight. Evening, uh, boxing historian. Evening, Lee Brown. How are you? Um. I'd like I'd like to see Rocky Fielding have one last hurrah, to be honest with you. I don't see it happening though, I'll be honest, Sean. I, I think I think he's not been active enough. He, you know, he, he had he only had two fights in 2019. He didn't have any in 2020. One fight in 2021. And he's had one fight this year so far. Um not active enough for me. Especially at this end at the end of his career, the way he is. Uh I only see this fight going one way. I think Dan Aziz stops Rocky Fielding, and not let's not forget Rocky Fielding's. I know, I know, he's, he's had a few fights at light heavy now, but he's come up from super middleweight. Um, his best win. I mean, let, for example, his best win was in 2017 against John Ryder. That's five years ago. Not bad, bad, not bad maths for me on, on a Thursday night, is it? Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I want it to be more than it is. I just don't see it. Carl, are you seeing this fight? I mean, this is one way I keep changing my mind on. I don't particularly rate, rate Dan Aziz, I'll be honest with you. So uh, a fight like Rocky Fielding, if you can, if you can get anywhere near... Even his 90%, it'll beat his ease. So I'm going to go for Rocky Fielding to beat Dan Aziz and prove that Dan Aziz is nowhere near even world level. I, I just, think... I just, see him, well, I just see him beating him, Carl. I, I, I think Fielding will take him on points. I think he'll beat him on points. I think I think he'll old man him. I think he'll, he's got a lot more ring craft than Aziz. I just quite, I'm just going with a gut feeling. Only the best have ever beat Fielding, haven't they? Callum Mundo and also Canelo. So, but but then part of me is thinking, what, what has Rocky got left in the tank? And I take all your points regarding inactivity, but I still think he'll have a bit too much for this kid. So I'm going to go for points. I'm going to go Rocky Fielding. Do you, want to, do you want to pick those comments up in the sidebar? So, Joe says, um, well, Lee, Lee Brown said only three fights since Canelo. Um, Joe says, if Aziz can impose himself on Rocky, it could be over very quickly. Ryan O'Rourke said, Fielding is only two years older, 
talking like Aziz as a young man is a 33 year old bum. Not like Ryan, sit on the fence, is it? <laughs> okay, so Sean, let's have your prediction. Yeah, I think fielding points as well. And I'm I'm going completely opposite to you guys. Uh, I'm going Dan Aziz to stop fielding um, in the later rounds. I'm going to go round nine. Okay, moving on to the next topic then. So, we're going to touch on Eubank Jr. versus Smith. Obviously, a lot of conversation been had, a lot of posts on social media, blah, blah, blah. So I guess we better start talking about who we think winning, is winning this fight. So um, we'll come to you first, and uh, break is a fight, Dan. I think he's going to play out and who wins. Um, firstly, I'm not buying all this all this bollocks that Eubanks coming out with. Uh, I think I think it's becoming it very just it's just pantomime now. It's not even. I don't even think, even think it works as a tactic to get under people's skin anymore. Uh, I think it's a bit of a joke, if I'm being completely honest. I don't really understand why he does it. He won a lot of people over in the build-up to the Ben fight because he handled himself with a lot of dignity. Um, and he got a lot of respect. Certainly got respect from me. Um, and then he falls back into his old ways and starts acting like this to try and, try and play the villain. Uh I, don't, I just don't understand it, if I'm being honest. Who do I think wins? Um, Liam Smith, in my opinion, does everything better than Eubank. And because of that, Liam Smith... I don't think he stops Eubank because Eubank's very, very tough. Um, what I think Eubank doesn't do very well... You see him throwing all these punches and on, on these videos... And, you, and it makes you think that he's got a really, really good engine. He's very fit, but I'm not sure he's got a great engine. I think if he's pushed, he's going to struggle because he takes a lot of time off in rounds. A lot of posturing. And, but, but what that's doing is that's buying him time. He's not having to fight for three minutes a round. And that is exactly what uh, Liam Smith will make him do. He'll put pressure on as he does. He'll slowly close the ground. And his feints and his movement make the other fighter work. Um, so, in my opinion, he beats he beats Eubank. It'll be it'll be a, a fairly close fight, but it'll beat Eubank on points. Sean? He beats, he beats Eubank. It'll be, it'll... Yeah, I think um, with uh, Eubank, he sees it in this fight, especially because Liam Smith isn't sort of a big talker or got a big persona as such. I think he sees it as he's the one that has to push it and sell the fight to get the because it's on pay per view, right? Isn't it? Uh, but, uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so, so I think in in Chris Eubanks' mind, he's he's got to push it and and get the buys in because it's not Liam Gaines, uh, Liam Smith's game to do trash talk or anything, is it? So that's why I think he's acting like that. In terms of the fight, I too think it will be close. I just think. Eubanks drew a big win. He hasn't really had one. He's got Roy Jones back in his camp now, so hopefully <laughs> that will be something to him. And and I think he'll probably win by a point or two, but it'll be super close. Good evening, Lee. Evening, mate. You're right. Yeah, very good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Run not out of razor bad. blades, have we? What's that? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that time of year, isn't it? <laughs> so um what so yeah that bit of fluff's not gonna keep you warm, mate. No, I know. I'm heading to um heading away on Sunday, so I'd need everything I can get, mate, to keep me warm. <laughs> I'm somewhere oh, very, please. very cold indeed. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um break us down how you think this fight goes. Uh what's this U Bat Junior one, is it? U Bat Junior Liam Smith, yeah. Um I'd imagine Liam Smith can take him the distance. He's we've seen a bit of a resurgence from Liam Smith, haven't we, the last couple of years? Um, I think everyone thought he was he was kind of done. 
Um, he's had some brilliant wins the last couple of years. Um, it's not going to be an easy night for Eubank Jr. I, I expect him to come through. And I don't yeah. know. I really don't know what I base that on either because whenever he's had a big test, he's failed it. Yeah. Um, I, so I don't I don't really know what basis I have to go on thinking that he should win and he should come through. I do think that, but I, I, I can't understand where I've got to that point. Maybe it's because he is the bigger name at the moment. Maybe it is because he talks his fights up. I don't know, but I think Liam Smith gives him a tough night. That's for sure. Do you think size plays a factor in this fight? Yeah. I mean, Liam's coming up a weight division, isn't he, to take the fight? So... I think that's definitely going to play a play, a play. <coughs> but um, I, I think it's probably going to be his toughest fight since he fought George Groves, probably. Cole, you need to help me out here, mate. These two from down south, there must be something in the water. They think that Eubank's going to get a win here. Well, we all know brain cells get lower as you head down the country, don't we? So <laughs> that, that'll be why. So, uh, obviously, I think Liam Smith's going to be Eubank Jr. I take your point regarding Eubank Jr. He's been in with some big hitters at high weights, and they've never not been able to knock him out. So, I don't think Liam Smith knocked him out. But I just think Liam Smith will break him up over 12 rounds. I think he'll, he'll win, the, win the rounds and, and beat him on points. I hope so. I do agree with Andy's point, which doesn't happen often, that he does like to showboat and, have a, and take some time off during rounds. Well, he's not going to get that luxury with Liam Smith. No. no so, um, yeah, my, my view is um, it's going to have to be the best Liam Smith, don't get me wrong, you know, um, but I think he'll beat Umac Jr. on points. going to be interesting this because that's 2-2 that's two, two we've got here on the panel. Everyone in the sidebar, are you seeing the fight? Let's have your opinions as well. I want um, Liam Smith to win. I'd love to see him win. So, Joe said it's a proper 50 50. Smith will make Junior work the entire fight. And Ryan said, wow, people really believe that I from Eubank, Roy Jones can't fight for him. Interesting, interesting. So, just while we wait for them comments regarding Eubank, Junior, and Smith, we're just going to touch on something that's quite close to me and under. So, finally, WBA have pulled the fingers out of their arse. And um, obviously, Santa Cruz is no longer the WBA super champion. So, I know we touched on this a little bit earlier in the show, but obviously, Lee Wood now the recognised WBA champion. So, Lee, I'll take your view first, Lee. Where, where's he going next? It'll be Lara, won't it? I would imagine. I'd imagine that fight gets made quite easily now. And what about, the, what about the Warrington fight in the summer? Do you think that's a distinct possibility as well? Um, I think Warrington possibly fights the winner of that fight. Um, so it, I, I, if I'm Lee Wood, I wouldn't be looking past Lara at the moment. I think I'd be focusing on that rather than the Warrington fight. I mean, Warrington's coming off the back of another loss. I know it was close, but um, yeah, I, I, I'm not got as much interest in the Warrington fight. fight I want to see Lee Wood fight Lara. How does that go then, Lee? <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I, yeah. I, think, I honestly think Lara beats him, but Lee Wood is brilliant. But I think Lara is just—I think he's looked phenomenal the last last couple of years. Um, guns in my head, I'd have to say Lara. But again, I'd I'd, I'd be open. Lee Wood would come for it. Sean, coming to you. Same question. So I'm assuming you think it's Lara next, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. So, so give us a breakdown that fight. Then how do you see that going? Just before we pick the comments up in the side, I, I think Lee Lee would probably beat him. I think he's sort of been in the Indian summer of his career now, isn't he? And and I think it's good to see because people are calling him like a paper champion because he was the regular thing, wasn't he? And and all this abuse he was getting. But let let's hope that he he wins and and he can get a real good payday and sort of finish his career in style. So that's one all in under. I'm not sure why I'm bothering coming to you for your prediction, but I will. So give us your thoughts on Laura fight. Laura is very, very dangerous, mate. Very, very dangerous. Laura, Laura holds something that, that not many fighters at that, that weight carry. And that's the X factor with his with his power. Um 
Lee Wood has that as well. Don't get me wrong. But Lee Wood's a much better boxer, in my opinion. Uh, and and I think I think Lee Wood comes through this fight. Uh, I think I think though, I'll be honest. Even though they're both massive punchers, um, and and it'd be very easy to say this don't go twelve rounds, but I actually think it does. I think it'll be a war. Um, back to the fact that he's just been made up to super, super champion. So he's now the only WBA. I'm guessing they 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 drop in the the uh, regular belt now. Yeah, and they start to do that in the divisions, aren't they? So I'm guessing they drop in the regular belt. It's about time. I mean, I, I've been moaning. I've been moaning since we since this channel's been going, uh, and we've, and I've been counting as the as the years have gone by. <laughs> to be quite honest with you. We're talking nearly four years now since um, since Santa Cruz last defended that title, which is disgraceful. It's bad enough. It's it's a bad look for Santa Cruz. He probably doesn't care. But it's a bad look for Santa Cruz that he's held on to it for so long and now he's just given it away. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Um, but it's an even worse look for the WBA. This needs... How this hasn't been called out by, by uh, bigger personalities in the boxing world, I really don't know. Um, maybe they're scared to rock the boat with the WBA. I don't know, but it's disgraceful. The way they've behaved in this in, in this circumstance is disgraceful. To allow somebody to keep a belt for the best part of four years and do nothing with it, it's outrageous. Finally, like, like you say, Carl, finally they've woke up, smelling salts have come out, um, and they've come to the senses. Uh, what this does now is, as you've already said, Carl, it gives Lee Wood the, the bargaining chip. Other fighters that, that, and they've all done it, by the way, other fighters that have said, well, he's only a regular champion. Why should I fight him? They haven't got that excuse now. They've got to put up and shut up. Um, and I think Lee Wood's looking at unifications. And Lee Wood said to us on, on the show, back when he was British champion, he wanted Navarrete, um, which was a big statement at the time. But he still he still wants their big fights, mate. He believes in himself, yeah, yeah. and that's why he's got to the position he's in. So uh, Lee Wood on points for me. So just bringing comments up on the side. Joe Joe says he's going for Eubank Junior for the knockout. Uh, Ryan's talking nonsense about me making a drink for Lee Wood as well, and he must be on the beer. Um, Joe says Lara stops Wood. Ryan says the fight is over by six rounds for me. I agree. I don't think this has got any chance of getting to points. Uh, not with them two having a shootout. And Joe said if Conlon can drop Wood, he's got his hands full with Lara. Great. Still yeah, we need, to take, we need to take them things in context, though, lads. We need to take them things in context. That people, shot getting all excited, people getting all excited about Laura and, and saying his best things in sliced bread. But it, again, he was in with uh, Warrington. It's on the slide. He's been proved now. So I, I, I just want to just just that that shot that Warrington landed from Conlon. That shot that landed from Conlon, by the way, leading to see coming. So that's why that put him down. Yeah, but he should have seen it coming, shouldn't he? Yeah, but he didn't. He didn't. Not every boxer sees every shot coming. Um, you not, not think Lara will throw shots that you won't see coming? The point though. I'm making, the point I'm making though, Lee, is that um, Conlon landed that same shot about ten times for the next four or five rounds, and and they didn't put Lee Wood down. It's just it, it, the, the reason he got put down by that shot is because he didn't see it coming. That's that's the only reason he got put down. Yeah, well, he'll have a few of them against Lara. I can tell you that. Well, I'm sure, yeah, sure Lara'll have a few as well. It, that, and that's why it's an intriguing fight, isn't it? Because they're Absolutely. both bangers. Yeah, yeah. So we got a new comment from Superman. Wood beats Lara, Eubank Jr. stops Smith. Thanks for joining us, Superman. So Ryan says, Warrington dad and Tio's dad must, must most delusional in boxing. Warrington's still young enough to improve, but needs new trainer. I don't think he's young enough to improve, to be honest with you. No, I don't either. No. I, I, I agree that he need, I agree I agree that he needs a new trainer though. Or maybe yeah. is it, or is he too long in the tooth for that car? I think he I think I think he is what he is as a one dimensional fighter if I'm being very honest with you. He is what he is. I'm not sure a new trainer would benefit him. That style of fighting 
that style of fighting that Warrington's got is brilliant when you're on top form. Got a and he, looked, last, he, though, it? he looked outstanding, but he looked outstanding, didn't he, for a number of years. He looked almost unbeatable. Let's have it right at one point. He looked almost unbeatable. But that style of fighting also, when you do drop a little bit, you you become you come unstuck, don't you? Because more shots land than you land. Yeah, he's always been reckless, though, hasn't he? And that's that's yeah. the problem. Yeah, I think he almost at the start of the fight at the weekend, he did try to go for a bit of a more disciplined approach. I don't think that worked very well for him. He gets dragged in though, don't he, Lee? He can't help himself. Yeah. Yeah, but so he... right. So Ryan Evolve says, "Well, your dad telling you." Wh- Telling you you winning certainly don't help. That's right. And Superman says, I'm not sure if Warrington was on the slide. He was an undefeated ex-champion. And yeah, number one featherweight in the world. Warrington only was on Warrington only was on a good run and only looked on the slide after the Lara defeat. Yeah. I, I think I think you're right. I think Superman's right with a lot of what he says there. Um but the the Lara defeat is is what's done it for me, the 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 the, the knockout that really bad knockout, and then to follow that up a couple of fights later with a broken jaw, from Kiko, it's not good at this this stage in somebody's career. It's really not. It it, it puts years on you, um, and I think I think I think that might be what's happened with with Warrington. I tell you what though, what an atmosphere that would be at the City Ground. It'd be a little bit naughty that one would the Leeds fans and the Forest fans, wouldn't it? Well, I, I mean obviously I got to see first stand at the weekend, Carl, just uh uh raucous the crowd is in Leeds. And it is, to be fair. Um and it is in Nottingham, we've seen that as well. Uh yeah, you're right, it's it'd be outstanding, mate. Yeah. So Ryan There is one can... fighter that uh, you're talking about though, in in the division. See that again, Sean. Super IBA. There, there is one fighter that you're not talking about, though, who who thinks he deserves all this fight. The the IBO supremacist Jazza Dickens. Where does oh, he fit please. in all of this? He doesn't, mate, because he's not good enough. Um, he could fight Conlon. And everyone's going to. And everyone's, I, I everyone's Ryan, gonna, I reckon Ryan's going to jump in there and defend Dickens. That's my prediction. Of course he will. And he's going to say, "Yeah, he's already beat Lee Wood." That was a different. Is that how his voice is? Um, so Superman said, "Maybe all the injuries and tough fights have taken a toll. The Lara destruction made things worse. Warrington style never ages well." Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, Ryan O'Rourke says um, Dickens is shite. Don't sit on the fence, Ryan. Superman says, can Warrington versus Lara still sell? There's still one belt and it's not like Warrington got blasted out. It was a close points loss. It was still sell, wasn't it? You put a good undercard on it. That's That fight sells. No problem there. And, and I, tell, I tell you now, I tell you now as well, I don't think Warrington ducks Lara either. I think he takes that no. fight he's offered it. No. Um, going on slightly off topic, uh, Ryan O'Rourke says, Paul Butler shot me how well he done. He did do well, Ryan, but God, was he in his show. He had to be, though, Carl. Yeah, it depends how you define well. I suppose he went to survive, didn't he, to be honest? I don't, I don't think we've seen the best of him either. Yeah, he was never going to win the fight. I, I want want to see him him on the, uh, you, mate. Fulton, if he's going above. Say again, John. I want to see uh, Unue fight Fulton next if he's going up in weight. Yeah, good shout. So Superman said, did Paul Butler disgrace the UK? Question mark. It was a huge undisputed fight in Japan and all he did was run like a oh, come on. biatch. Come on. You talk. You're talking. You're talking about again. Again, you're talking about potentially one of the best pound for pound fighters around. It's it's very harsh that. I mean, in no way did he disgrace the UK because he had the gonads to go over and fight him in his own backyard for exactly, one. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Plus, no one watched it on a Tuesday anyway, so it don't matter too much. Oh, I did, Lee. Some some of us work, Lee. You know what I mean? Unlike yeah, that's it. 
I'm not going to. I'm not going to make no more comments about that. I just want to state that I did watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on. Just pick up Ryan's. So Ryan says, "How can you disgrace the UK? The fight wasn't even shown in the UK." Um, Superman probably didn't even watch the fight. And he, Ryan says, I watched in work and Yeah, of course you me. did, mate. Of course you did. Joe just says, like just Paul a, did while he was working. Joe says, just the golf, flexi time and deflexi time. Just the <laughs> golfing, just the golfing talent. Butler had to fight that way. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Too easy, says, laughing my arse off. I wouldn't get in the ring with Inui wearing a beer protective suit. Butler never stood a chance, but props for getting in there. Absolutely. Mm. So, moving on to the last topic, which is, uh, I make no apologies, but it is kind of local to Nottingham in a way. So, Carl Greaves' final show happens at Newark on tomorrow night. Um, and Andy, I don't know if you want to take this one away. Yeah, um... I make no apologies that we that, that we uh, that we back Carl Greaves a lot on this show. Um, I think he's a I think he's a very very hard working boxing man, uh, trainer, fighter, promoter, and this is one of his shows. Uh, he has some real talent in that gym, by the way, um, and it's also just to put a little uh, another another little narrative on the night. It's also Dex Spellman's last ever fight. Um, so fighters that know who Dex Spellman is, they'll know what sort of career he's had, and it'll be a shame to see this as his last fight. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that we go into this, Colin covering it. Um, like I say, there's there's some real talent. Anyone that anyone that wants a last boxing fix before the Christmas break, if you live within driving distance and and uh, and you want a good night of boxing get yourselves down to this you'll probably pick pick a ticket up for 40 quid i'm sure I, 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 it, it might be sold out i'll be i'll be surprised if there's a lot left but there might be some and uh, get yourself down there there's like i think 10 fights on the card am i right Carl? 10 fights around there yeah, yeah um cool, and there's like i say there's some real up-and-coming talent in in carl's gym uh, names for the future, like the likes of Stanley Stannard and Tom Cowling. Um, these guys are going on to some real, real big things. But remember these, remember these names, and remember that we said them on this show. That's really all I wanted to say on it, Carl. To be honest with you, um, but there's going to be a lot of footage dropping on the channel from this um, over the the coming few days. Uh, we're going to try and get ourselves down to the weigh-in if we can as well. Um, a lot of these small old shows, are weighing, the weigh-in uh, happens on the on the day of the fight, which is what's happening here. Um, yeah. Ryan, so Ryan says, I, I put the question up regarding small old shows and he's put Ryan things to the dead. And he also goes on to say 40 quid, expensive before Christmas, small old show for fighters nobody knows, should be 20 quid. Wow. And to Clearly, reason, well, Unfortunately, Ryan... Unfortunately, mate, it don't work like that. Uh, these small old shows are not cheap to put on. If they sold the tickets at twenty quid each, these small old shows wouldn't wouldn't last. They'd all be done. And, and they made a very good point in the sidebar: the fact that we haven't covered Chris Billum Smith. Mm. Oh no, we never did. See, so, yeah, I leave Andy in charge of the show running. Hold on a second. Hold on and hold on a minute. You say on. On. moving on to the next topic. You told us to move on, so let's pick it up now. Thank you for reminding us. Let's Robert. rewind and let's rewind and say, say, say we're moving on then, shall we? Hashtag blame Andy. Let's get it trending on Twitter. <laughs> let's pick it up now then, Carl. You take it away, mate. So Chris Billum Smith. So I've got to do, I've got to do, I've got to do, I'm going to the screen and talk about the, uh, I'm, I'm multitasking, am I? Um, you, um, you're a grown up, I'm sure you can handle it. Yeah. So Crispin and Smith, um, yeah, I'll let, I'll let you guys pronounce that surname. I was, I was waiting, that's why you were passionate between yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Jojad. Go on then, Lee, you pipe talk, have a go with them. Jojad. Yeah, we'll have that. 
So that's a much better effort than Adam made. Obviously, Kosovan loves a tough mother. Lost to Masternak though recently, so I think I mean I'm not a fan of Chris Bill and Smith. If I'm honest with you, I don't think he's going to do anything in the division. Yeah. Um, I expect Chris Bill and Smith to win this one on points. I don't think he stops this guy. So that's my that's my opinion. To be honest with you, you don't bang particularly hard at that weight, um, but he's an half decent boxer. Here you go. What do you think, Andy? I think he's. Uh, I think Chris Bill and Smith European level. Um, I think he wins this fight though, uh, and I agree with you. I think he wins it on points. He's not done anything to show me that he can move up to that next level, mate. And after that great pronunciation, Lee, we'll come to you next. So I uh, do you see this planning out. Uh, it, it beat him. Um, I think he might stop him late. Um, but from what I've looked for, that shows you he's not. He, he's quite tough, but he hasn't. He hasn't really fought anyone as he's a couple of losses on his record. Um, yeah, I think either late or points, but yeah, I'll, I'll go for a stoppage. Sure. Yeah, I agree. I think Ben and Smith will win by a stoppage around ten. Do you think they're sort of positioning him to fight a Riakpo or a Cody if he goes to box the next then? Well, he's already lost to Riakpo, hasn't he? So oh, that'd he be, it'd be a good rematch yeah. if he did. It'll be a nice introduction for a Cody though, won't it? They're, they're gym mates, aren't they? They're not going to fight each other. Are they? Mm. I thought Arcoli had, um, had moved elsewhere. No, he's going back to um, he's going back to that gym from what I've heard. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought he was out in Dubai now, though, Lee, and he's it is creating a new circle of friends, including training and advisors. He has, but the last I heard this week was when he goes into camp for the one that's going to pass bids. He will be going back to uh, McGuigan Gym. That's what come out this week. It looked very much like he was leaving McGuigan, but no, apparently not. Apparently there's a bit of a U-turn with that and he is going to go back into camp with McGuigan. But watch the space, we'll see. Reading between the lines, Lee, um, is this is this just that Akoli's not in a very good place? I think he... I, I think he kind of overvalued himself. I think he's had this incredible offer from Sky Sports. And I think he's gone to Eddie trying to use it as a bit of a bargaining chip for a new contract. I think Eddie said, well, I don't think you're worth that. I think your fights are too boring. I think you, you're you not a big draw, which he's not. He, he's a big name in some, some aspects, but he's, he's, not an, he's not an exciting fighter, is he? Um, yeah, I agree. So I think, I think, I think uh, uh, all Owen wants is that one last fight that he thinks he's got on the contract. Because he's admitted that he's lost shed load of money on a Curry Lanter. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't I think he knows full well he's not going to get that last fight out of him. And I think that purse bid, I think Ed, I don't think Matt Shroom will go hard to try and win that by any means. But um, you? no. No. But um What do you think's happened with two five eight? That's a weird one that I think that's because they're so in with matchroom, aren't they? I think it kind of goes hand in hand a little bit. He, he has said that he has said that's been an amicable split, though, hasn't it? With two five eight, by all accounts, it was amicable. You'd like to hope so. Still doesn't make a lot of sense, though, Cole, does it? Surely two five eight are making him making him big money, and they and they, and they give oh, him the profile that he needs. God. He's been offered more at Sky, though, hasn't he? That's that's, that's the problem, isn't it? By all accounts, from what you were reading there in press conferences, blah, 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 interviews, like Lee said, he went in waving this offer around from Sky Sports to be the face of their face of boxing on Sky. And like Lee said, I think Eddie's looked at the numbers and gone, I can't even get close to it. Because by all accounts, Cody said, I don't even want you to match it. I just want you to get close to it. Yeah. And right. Allegedly. It's a bit of a big turnaround. It's a bit of a U-turn for for Eddie and me, and this this is another <clears throat> another little warning that maybe the purse strings are being tightened at DAZN because 
it wasn't long ago a Coley was was going to be the next massive face and the next massive star. They were looking to push him up to to heavyweight. Um, Since then, there's been a lot of lacklustre performances, hasn't there? There has, but but it's still getting the the, the narrative of, of he's going to be a gigantic star from from Eddie Earn. Mm. Now all of a sudden, obviously the numbers don't match. Eddie Earn's a, a businessman at the end of the day, but it's a very big U turn in my opinion. And like I say, you know, Eddie Hearn goes into it. Yeah, sorry, Sean. Eddie Hearn goes into it. In- in, in great detail on uh, Dave Caldwell and Sam Jones do a podcast and Eddie Hearn was a guest on there and, right. and it's about three quarters of an hour in, in length but it, it goes into it in great detail and it's quite interesting watch I recommend it I will do what so obviously don't take 45 minutes to tell us what he says but give us a shorter version uh, 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 just basically that uh, the the uh, Akoli threw everything out of the pram when he fought on the AJ undercard because uh, they gave that fight when the Polish fella pulled out and Akoli don't count it as part of his contract. Yeah, but apparently he was paid a separate amount for that fight. That's right. Yeah. Outside of his contract, so if he's accepted that money, and I mean, you put these people in a position to negotiate for you, you put your trust in them, then that that falls on him, doesn't it? Surely. So Ryan says, face of Sky, then boxing is dead on Sky. No casuals know who Akoli is. Joe says, Earn's in trouble if he's publicly saying he can't compete with Sky. Akoli, the first of manner. Superman says, Earn is having big issues with Cash Cow in AJ. lost twice. Eubank Jr. versus Ben fell apart. And his American run hasn't gone like he wanted. His owner's lost a lot of money out Earn's feeling the pressure. Not he sure doesn't, about Superman that. doesn't say anything there that I disagree with. I think they've had they've had some huge cards this year on the zone, haven't they? Obviously on a British level, we're all very disappointed because it's not been as yeah. much, but globally, they've had some massive shows. They have they have had some big shows. There's a big uh, there's a big amount of money on one fighter there, weren't there? It's a real big gamble to money mm. to pay AJ. Yeah. Well, they spent a lot of money on AJ for him to lose that Usyk fight, haven't they? Let's yeah. be honest. And all of a sudden now he's fighting the next tier down, isn't it? When you think about yeah. Dillian White's in this world and people like that. So step backwards, isn't it, for him? Commercially, I'd imagine that it'll be eye watching how much AJ's being paid by the zone. And yeah. now there's a bit of a scrabble, isn't there, to, for them to try and recoup that money? I mean, don't get me wrong, Carl. Um, AJ sells AJ sells out arenas and stadiums, <laughs> no matter who he fights, and um, been... massive pay per view numbers, no matter who he fights. I'm sure. Um, In the UK, but I'm thinking about a global perspective. I'm not yeah, sure he does go there. Right. You're probably right. He's not known as, as well globally, is he? Certainly not in America. We definitely need a dance partner for him to start being no more in them territories. So, you know, OK from a UK perspective, but when he starts talking globally. Well, there's only one dance partner in the States that's that's worthy of that, then, isn't there? You don't, you don't want any part of that. Not any part of that at the moment, I don't think. What about, what about putting him in with Jared Anderson? Too soon for Anderson. I don't think Anderson would take that fight. And they're building him, aren't they? They're building Anderson, so why would there's two early to throw him in? Yeah, I agree. Ryan makes an interesting point. Um, it, it looks like DeZone's turning on Matchroom, investing big in Golden Boy. Especially from an American perspective, I'm guessing. I think mm. DeZone have realised that, that... I think DeZone have realised that no matter what Eddie Earn does in the States, he's not going to be welcomed. Um, they just don't like his brash, his brash cocky personality. And, and that's what it is. Uh, you know, he doesn't he doesn't hold back on saying that himself about himself. Um, and the Americans just haven't warmed to him. So because of that, and also the promoters haven't warmed to him, that's the real big thing, isn't it? If promoters in America don't want to work with you, you're done, aren't you? Um, and, and you just can't make fights in the States. So Superman said, the zone losing AJ versus Usyk too, and Newman Junior versus Ben fell apart. 
They haven't cracked the UK market like they wanted. Even Canelo lost under Earn. Outside of Canelo, DeZone had no big cards that generated. That's just not true. I, th no. I think one fight that, that people don't that that people don't really take account how big a derive she was for the zone. That's Katie Taylor, especially in America and Ireland. She's probably one of the only few fighters that, that, that are really carrying the torch for the zone at the minute. Right, I've got to jump off, lads. Right, cheers, Lee. Good see to see you again, Lee. Cheers. See you later. And I'll come back to my original point. It was only today when you had Joe Markoska sat with Kala Sauerland regarding this misfixed boxing event with KSI and some UFC fighter in January, talking about the numbers it's generating, the it's it's generating. What and I come back to my original point that concerns me. If we don't start getting the best fight and the best in mainstream boxing. I'm worried that the likes of the zone are going to start looking more and more to this community because it generates income. It does. It does, and it, and it makes money. And the zone obviously want to get money back. So they're putting emphasis on on these um, YouTube fights because they know that they're going to make dollars out of it. Which is pay-per-view, by the way, and they're talking about 700,000 to a million buys. It'll do that as well, Carl. I, I've never said that, that the, these YouTubers don't, don't generate views or don't generate pay-per-view buys but they're not pay-per-view buys from from boxing fans are they they're pay-per-view buys from their youtube followers so it doesn't yeah. do anything for boxing it, that's my argument doesn't no, bring, Kale, this... tried to talk about developing that crossover because Lee, liam smith fights you about the week after but he did acknowledge it's not there at the minute no and it's never going to be it's never going to be there's no way somebody that watches KSI doing things on, on a YouTube channel, uh, I don't know, maybe, you know, late teens or early 20-year-old um, demographic that, that have never watched boxing, they have never grown up on boxing. There's no way all of a sudden, just because he's fighting, they're going to start watching mainstream boxing. It just doesn't happen, mate. It's not going to happen. I'll show you. I'll tell you how attractive it is. My 10-year-old daughter come downstairs today and said that she wants to wants me to buy the pay-per-view. So it shows you how they're getting the word out there. So there's an audience, isn't it? Obviously, you know, uh, different you know, I'm, saying, I'm, not, I'm not disputing that. I'm not disputing that it makes a lot of money. It just doesn't do anything for, box, for boxing. I'm not interested no. in what in what DAZN do with these with these shows. I, I couldn't care less. Do what you want. Um, keep it to yourselves. I won't be buying it because I'm a boxing fan. I'm not a YouTube, you know, I'm not a YouTube follower. I'm a boxing fan. And is that is that a show that, that, that they could be putting a proper boxing event on? Yep. But you can't blame them for doing what they're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm just, the point I'm making is all these promoters that keep on coming out with this garbage that, it's bringing new eyes onto the sport. It's just a load, mate. It's a load. It's just uh, Eddie Earn's done it. Now Callis Allen's doing it. It's just yeah. a load. It's rubbish. Complete and utter rubbish. So Ryan O'Rourke says AJ Andy Ruiz is fight to make for worldwide pay per view. The Mexicans buy UK buys. Superman said KSI did over five hundred thousand on pay per view. It's digital pay-per-view, so they've got to keep all their money without splitting it with a satellite provider. Superman goes on to say, even if 10% of the YouTube and Instagram fans jump on boxing, it's good, and they'll, indu and they'll indulgence a younger generation to take up the sport. I'd like to see, Superman, I'd like to see the evidence, because I don't believe it's even 1%. Not even, not even half a percent. I don't think it's any percent. None of them. Where's the, where's the, the increase in views on, on mainstream boxing? Have you seen boxing double? Have you seen the, the views on boxing double or pay per views buy on boxing double? No, you haven't. If anything, it's getting worse. You're getting less buys and less views in, on boxing than there ever has been. So, so Superman, the evidence that, that it's bringing new eyes to the sport. What is none is there? Superman says YouTubers could have chosen UFC or WWE, but they chose boxing and it'll help a little bit. 
I can't believe says, you're falling for it. I can't believe you're falling for it. I really can't. Tweezy says, and uh, boxing doesn't do anything for boxing. Promoters and fighters avoiding the fights people want does not does no more for boxing than these YouTubers doing what they do. I agree with you, Tweezy. But, but boxing promoters and fighters are not helping the sport at all. And that's why, certainly in America, it's it's not even the fourth or fifth um, most watched sport these days. Mm, interesting times. Interesting times. It's just the numbers they're doing, isn't it? You know, you can't argue with that. You can't argue with that, can you? No, and, you and obviously, these obviously these big these big um, these big broadcasters are going to get their heads turned. They're going to get their heads turned because it's big numbers. But, but so, as, as a boxing as, that, as, as a boxing fan, it just doesn't do it for me. Superman says, should they mix the cards? Yeah, I think that's no. already been tried. You know, you've had some real, you've had Serrano, haven't you, on Jake Paul's card, etc., etc. Billy Joe Saunders wants he fighting on a Jake Paul undercard. Yeah, so should they mix the cards, add yeah. real title fights with big YouTubers, that might grow the sport. Again, not for me, to be honest. Not for me, because I don't think boxing, hardcore, definitely not hardcore boxing fans are going to tune in, because let's be honest with you. I'm not the, the the few that I have seen have been absolutely dreadful, and also you got the allegations of you can't punch me, or you know allegedly that you you know so allegedly yeah, it's no better than white collar call. Yeah, you can argue Jake. You can argue Jake Paul is better than that. Um, but at what level is he better than that? Is he is he is he um area level is he is he english level he's 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 got the money and he's paid for the best possible trainers that he can get that money can buy that's going to take him to a to a certain level but he's not fought a boxer yet he's not fought a real boxer but he calls himself a boxer i don't want to go down that route with with the jake paul topic again because it just makes me mad I, so right it's never so work. Ryan said, facts and uh, UFC is taking over people don't appreciate the skills of boxing. Nobody has any interest in the lower weights. Um, not in not in our country, they don't, Ryan. They do in the, in the likes of Mexico. So Superman says, why not have why not have YouTubers on U, on Newbank Junior versus Smith undercard? It will boost views of those only fans. Gear, uh, the, those only fan girls box on the card of the, of those YouTube gamers. No. Superman, you're starting to make me head hurt, mate. Good evening, that guy. You're all good. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, Joe says he's shy from what I've seen, gets beast up at area level. So I'm assuming that's Jake Paul. Agree. So, is there anything else you want to cover before we bring it to a close? No, I, I need to go and text some paracetamol, mate. My head's hurting. Anyone in the sidebar want to cover anything? Um, post it now. If not, we'll bring the show to an end. Thank you. Well, uh, while wait for a few more comments, um, thanks to everybody. There's been some new faces tonight. Um, thanks to all the new guys uh, and girls that have joined us on the in the sidebar comments have been brilliant even if even if we don't agree um superman it's it's all about opinions mate i'm not i'm not saying you haven't got an opinion I'm just saying don't agree with it on on some of the occasions um but please join us again uh because every opinion is welcome so superman said mexico and japan love the lower weights it's all about what region of the world you're in uh, yeah, yeah it's true. Okay, so we'll bring it to a oh, so so Superman says, How many buys will Junior versus Smith do? They say the Manchester Arena is sold out. Go on, then, Sean, you throw your figure out first. Uh, 250,000. I'd go a bit, I'd go a bit north for that. What, what's it on? Is it it's on Sky, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think it does a minimum of 500. 
Yeah, I, I, I think Andrew's about right in that. I think Sky, well, obviously, you got the you got the platform, haven't you? Sky Sports News. It's going to be all over. It's going to be all over Sky for weeks, weeks of build up, mate. It'll so be I, I, I'll go. I'll, I'll probably double what you said, a bit like what Andrew said, around the five hundred thousand mark. Although tough times because it's January, people are just spent on Christmas presents. That might have a bit of an impact, but. But yeah, depends what the price point is. Do we know what the price point is? It's going to be around what yeah, everything else has, has been at the minute, about 26, 27 quid, isn't it? That might be interesting to see where Sky put that. So, so Ryan said he thinks it does 200,000, no more. Interesting. Go on, Andy, take it out then. Yeah, like, like I've just said, um, thanks to everybody in the sidebar for your comments. Um, this show is all about opinions. That's why we do it. It's for you guys to come on and and, and uh, tell us what you think on on the topics we bring up. Uh, thanks for joining again, Sean. Uh, we do this Definitely show live. For anyone that doesn't doesn't know, you're joining for the first time. We do this show live every Thursday, seven pm. Uh, there's also lots of interviews from live events dropping. Uh, we're going to a card we spoke about earlier on. Uh, a local card, Carl Greaves, small old show tomorrow night so there'll be lots of footage dropping in over the weekend i would suspect thanks again for joining everybody and we'll see you next week